Importance of Cohort Index Date in Study Designer, Tutorial 16. For those who wish deeper insight into cohort building and their use in Accountable Healthcare Analytics, read Riddles in Accountable Healthcare, available through Amazon, both in paperback and Kindle, by Aron Bellin. In the previous study, we took a look at a group of diabetics and we asked, after they were brought into either good or bad control, did they have different hospitalization rates? Did those with good diabetes control have a lower hospitalization rate than those in bad diabetes control? And in fact, we found a significant difference. Now we're going to ask a different question. We're going to open up the old study. We're going to ask a question, instead of asking about hospitalization, from the moment of control, we're going to ask a question about hospitalization from the moment of original diagnosis. As we're about to change the two cohorts that we looked at before. First, I'm going to, in my study, save as I'm going to call it Diabetics with Hospitalization. Now that means we need to have new cohorts. The original cohorts are not correct. So let's go to the group and let's actually create new cohorts to accomplish our goals. To do that we have to go to the three dotted button. This opens up the good diabetic cohort. We're going to save it, and we're going to name, change its name to Good Diabetes Index on Diagnosis. Now we notice that the index line here is originally earliest of repeat hemoglobin A1c. We want to follow the hospitalizations from the original diagnosis. So we have to edit the index line so that instead of pointing to repeat hemoglobin A1c, it's pointing to the original event of diabetes. Update and close. Notice earliest of diabetes. Now we're going to build. And we see 373 people. And importantly, the index date is from the moment of the original diagnosis. Let's close this out. Notice we're not saving, we're just closing. You notice it appears in the management panel as a completed cohort. Let's take the bad diabetics. Let's edit it. Let's rename it. Bad diabetics index on diagnosis, and again, instead of having the index line pointing to the second line, we'll have it point to the first. We'll edit this. And we go to the bottom of the page, we use the scroll bar, the, we use the vertical scroll bar, and we change this instead of event, repeat hemoglobin A1C, we put it on the event diabetes, we update and close. And now we have earliest of diabetes, and we rebuild it. Notice over here what's about to happen. We have bad diabetes index on diagnosis. Here is 1010, We're closing them down. We exit. Yes, we want to close, and we exit from the management panel. Now we're back, we're back in Study Designer. Let's choose from the drop down menu instead of having the good diabetics. Let's have good diabetics on diagnosis. And let's have bad diabetics index on diagnosis. With the baseline set on the good control people. Now we're ready to run it. 
We already built our method, and the method is time to outcome. The nice thing about time to outcome is you can change the cohorts and just rerun it without putting in a new method. This is not true of the other methods. Let's look at the target event. And we notice that over the year time of follow-up, there is no difference between the good control and bad control group. That is, when you follow the patients from the original diagnosis, they have the same, the same outcome of the first year. This is sort of reassuring because you want to, know, you want to make sure that these patients have baseline comparability. The p-value is 0.978, and they both have a hospitalization rate of about 23.3%. Here's 23.3%, 23.7%. They're pretty close. When we look at the graph, we notice something a little strange. They seem to be separating out in 180 days, the first 180 days. So let's repeat the analysis, and this time look at only the first 180 days. So we'll go back to the criteria, and instead of 365 days, we'll put in 180 days. Let's rerun this. Let's look at the target events. It looks like the good control patients come in the hospital faster than the bad control patients. 16.1% versus 13.6%. Confidence intervals actually overlap, so it's not statistically significant. The p-value is 0.247. But it sort of suggests that at least in the beginning, as you're intensifying glucose control, those patients who are ultimately fated to be in good glucose control have a higher hospitalization rate than those who are in bad control. That is, those who start out, they both start out in this elevated hemoglobin A1C range, but those who get under good control in the first 180 days do so at a penalty of greater hospitalization, where those in bad control do not experience that hospitalization rate at the same rate. Clearly it's not statistically significant, and I may be overcalling it, but it is a cautionary tale about the impact of getting to goal. Sometimes getting to goal is some risk in the early period of time. And this may be what we're looking at. You notice here where we have 365 days and no information. The reason for that, we take a look at our criteria. We asked to look for 180 days, but we used as our estimation points 30, 60, 90, 180, 365. Had we eliminated the 365 here, rerun it, Look at the target events, we now have a much cleaner table. At 180 days, we see the 16.1% versus the 13.6%, but we don't see that additional column. Importantly, there's still no statistical significance, but there's a hint that there is a cost to being more aggressive in diabetes care, at least in the beginning. Ultimately, there may be benefit.